Coming soon to own on DVD. We got the Panasonic DVD L50 Palm Theater. This device has a five inch LCD display and a 4,500 milliamp battery, which is enough to maybe get through one movie. It lasts about two to two and a half hours. So this one in particular came out in 1999. Yes. And what Panasonic was going for was a more portable device because yeah. this one was the smallest one that they had made at the time. Yeah, while still keeping like the premium kind of appearance and aesthetics of their yeah. previous models. Because this thing is smaller, but it, it looks super sleek. Like the build quality is like top notch. You've got this like chrome kind of finish on everything. It doesn't look like a toy, which at the time these were kind of considered luxury items, which they should be for the price. Yeah. This thing retailed at launch, $1,099.95. Which that was in 1999. If yeah. you calculate like inflation today, that would be around 18 to $1,900 now. Yeah. And it also doubles as a DVD player if you wanted to use it on your regular TV. Yeah. You, know, you didn't have to use it in a portable way all the time. Yeah, which not all portable DVD players offered at the time, so that just kind of adds to the value. This thing really does have all the features that you would want. You know, it has the portable battery, it has the video in and out. But because of the size of it, it does come at some sacrifices, like the five inch display is smaller. Yeah, it also has a smaller battery. Yeah. Whenever we were researching it, it said that the previous model got around four hours of battery time, so. Yeah. You know, it, it made some sacrifices, but. But the main focus with this thing was portability. And I think it does that pretty well. It, it weighs about two pounds with the attachable battery. Which is pretty heavy for the size of this thing. And it, you know, if you were like using this in the car, I think it would get pretty uncomfortable after a while. Yeah. But the motor on this thing is like whisper quiet. Yeah, I mean, if, if you had the movie going, you would not hear yeah, the motor at all. At all. Which I guess brings us to the speakers. The, the speakers on this device are pretty loud. They're loud, but they're not like the highest quality speakers. Yeah, they actually sound worse the louder that you, yeah. <laughs> that you play them. But there is a headphone jack if you choose to opt for headphones. So this thing was supposed to come with a remote. Ours did not, but you would use it for when you had it plugged into a TV. Yeah, but if you're just using it as a standalone device, it's not really a problem because this thing has great navigation buttons. Yeah, so we have like a directional pad that is similar to like a joystick. We have like a menu, we have a title, we have a stop, pause, play, pretty much every button that you would want. Yeah. You know, that way you wouldn't have to use a remote. And there's also a button that adjusts the size of the screen between like normal and then like zoomed in. The image is pretty sharp for being something made in the 90s. Yeah. It has a high refresh rate or at least it looks like it does. One thing that I just noticed is that when you're holding it with the screen open, this thing really wants to go that way. Yeah. Like that would get so uncomfortable after yeah. like an hour of watching I mean, it's thing. like very top heavy. Yeah. This device on top of being able to play regular DVDs can also play VCDs and then music CDs. VCDs kind of predated DVDs. They were using regular CD-ROMs to burn like video files onto, and you usually had to have like a bunch of them. Like yeah. if you were to watch a full movie on it, it would usually be like four CDs. So some of the reviews that we were looking at, someone had said that it was a good alternative to buying like an HD TV at the time because they had mentioned how expensive those were and that yeah. this really was kind of like the budget option. Yeah, an HD TV would have brand new like eight to $10,000, but this is marketed at retail for like 1100. That, that being said, you know, it would have to be for personal use. I can't imagine having a couple of friends over and watching whatever off of a five inch display. Yeah. But you know, this thing is pretty nifty. It's cool. And it's weird to think that there was a time where this thing was valued so high in the market because it, it seems so antiquated now. You know. Yeah, because you could pick these things up now, like a brand new one for roughly, you know, 50 to like $100. Yeah, like any big box retail place. So the next one we have is a Sylvania SDVD 7004. It's a more recent model than the 1999. I believe this came out in 2014. And I say I believe because there is no information about this device online. We couldn't even find like a PDF of like the instruction manual. And there's sort of only one video on this device online, but it's not even 
this exact device it's like yeah. the one the one that probably came out afterwards yeah well i mean this feels like the budget version of that version because other models of this had like mp3 and like jpeg functionality it had like a usb thing where you could plug a flash drive into it yeah. this thing is super bare bones if it wasn't for two other ebay listings i i would think we have the only one <laughs> in production yeah i imagine this thing ran for probably 80 to 100 dollars when yeah. it came out it feels really cheap to me at least yeah the build quality is super it's got that thin plasticky like you could break it with one hand yeah. <laughs> kind of feeling it's got a seven inch display which is two inches above the previous one but the the image quality is so much worse the refresh rate is nowhere near the panasonic and it stutters a lot more than the previous one as well especially if you you know hit like a menu button yeah. or if you go over like a bump in the road yeah this thing will just lag so they really cut back a lot of the features that the previous one had and one of the main features is like the amount of buttons that it had yeah. you know you had buttons for fast forward and play and rewind and all that and this volume. one yeah, yeah and volume this one only has a directional pad a stop play and mode button there's yeah. a, and a power button when you click the mode button it brings up like a menu it's not user friendly at all no but the main feature for this device is it has a 180 swivel hinge and you could turn it around and hold it more like a tablet yeah. nowadays and it would be much more comfortable than to hold it at the base and have the screen coming at you at a different angle so that's like a big portability feature yeah it does have av out so you could plug it into a tv and use it as like your primary you know, DVD player if you wanted to. The speakers aren't very good. It doesn't get that loud and the audio quality is not very good yeah. also either. Everything yeah. about this feels very budget. It almost feels like the antithesis to what the Panasonic did so well, yeah. despite having a bigger screen. The motor is noticeably louder than the Panasonic as well. Yeah, even when watching a movie and having the volume up, you can still hear the device, you know, spinning the disc. Yeah and you know moving the laser around so this thing came out really when these things were heading out the door anyway yeah you know dvds are already becoming a little more obsolete especially with like tablets and phones being able to play movies and do all of that stuff like this thing really it, it probably really is only for kids yeah. if you don't trust them with your valuable ipad you could buy this this thing for them for about a hundred dollars. Panasonic really were putting out some of the best portable DVD players at the time. And then this is kind of like the death rattle of these kind of devices. Yeah, this is something that if you were to walk into Walmart like right now, you yeah. could probably find, <laughs> if not this exact one, you would find one that is very similar to this. You know, yeah. the most basic device The possible. most nondescript, yeah. And then also when it's closed, it, like since it's on like a swivel, the screen like it can swivel sort of back and forth when <laughs> yeah. it's closed. I don't know. Uh -huh. Like to me, it just feels really cheap. It, it doesn't feel stable. But that being said, the battery life is kind of equivalent to the Panasonic. It, it'll probably last two to two and a half hours. But that truly isn't in its favor either because that was considered bad back then. Yeah, because it was a step down yeah. from like four hours. I think if you were to put this device in a void where it had no competition, I think it would yeah. be you know, a pretty solid device, but even compared to the previous one, and then also compared to, you know, tablets and phones and stuff now, oh, yeah. this For thing, sure. this thing's really in like an awkward state of like, you know, why would you get this? Yeah. You know, it's cheap. It's not very efficient at what it does. In between the shelf and the clearance rack, you know? Yeah. Well, I, th I think it's kind of unanimous, but between the two, I, I think we both prefer the Panasonic for sure. Yeah. Better build, better quality screen. It feels more durable. The swiveling screen on this one, it doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Enough well, to it, like justify getting it. Yeah, it doesn't justify its misgivings. Yeah. You know? I think that's it. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> so really the crown jewel of all of these devices yeah is the cars 2 lightning mcqueen <laughs> portable dvd player yeah this is probably the best out of all three of these yeah it has a seven inch screen which is two inches above the panasonic it has the best screen out of the three the speakers don't get as loud as like the panasonic yeah. but the audio quality is way is pretty is is pretty <laughs> yeah. good yeah it's got composite video in and output it's got a headphone jack it plays dvd cd it was released alongside cars 2 2011 disney film <laughs> and the design of this thing is equal parts like terrifying as it is genius because like because the way it opens 
you have the wheel as like the disc cover, the, the toilet seat. Yeah. You've got this looping racetrack for like the speakers and the volume nub is his wheel. You turn the wheel to adjust the volume. I don't know, maybe it's funny to geek out about this, but. <laughs> this, I, I, th I think the design of it's pretty yeah, brilliant. It, it's, it's way cooler than it deserves to be. The headphone jack is the gas tank. Oh my God. It's perfect. You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> So it does have cons, right? The battery life is not great. It's about 1.5 to maybe two hours, yeah. which, which is good for a kid. You know, you can watch a full kid's movie in that time. The motor is super loud. It legitimately sounds like a car motor. <laughs> I think it's gotta be intentional. I, uh, and we'll, we'll play like an audio <laughs> clip of it, but it, it sounds like a car like shifting through gears. Really? Like it honestly does. It's the least portable out of all of these. Yeah, it's the I, biggest one. I mean, it's a toy first yeah. you know it's a toy first dvd player second and it's the most inconvenient to open you have to open it with two hands you have to one hand to hold lightning down and there's not really open the top there's not really a good place to hold it down like yeah. you would think that it would have like a lip on the front of it that you could it doesn't the whole front of it like even like the bumper of the car just lifts up it's actually know? kind of confusing the first time you put hands on it because it's not incredibly obvious what you have to do yeah. to get it to open. It's just a really wide Lightning McQueen car. But if I'm being completely honest, I don't know how else you would design this yeah. <laughs> and make it work. The navigation buttons aren't great. Um, you have to the, press down pretty hard on yeah, them. Yeah, the input's kind of off. So like the other two, this one could also be used as a regular DVD player for your TV. Yeah. And it has an infrared sensor. And then when you close it, it has like a pass through on the front of it. So you could use it closed, yeah. you know, as the DVD player. It, it's just got small design features that like, for, for what it is, they didn't have to, you know, they didn't yeah. have to go this hard. Someone took pride in designing this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think this thing is awesome. It's my favorite out of the three. Yeah, same. Not just for the novelty, but because like on a technical level, it literally is the best. Honestly, I'm surprised that we got this in such a good condition that we did because all of the decals are actual stickers. And it was actually kind of hard to find one of these that was like in really good condition like this. Yeah, I mean, it's meant to be like a kid's toy. Yeah. You know, they're meant to move this thing around. It's meant to be Without destroyed. a care in the world, you know? <laughs> yeah. This one was the most expensive one to buy. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I paid close spent. to $80 just for this thing. <laughs> yeah. And it was worth every penny of that. It's just a weird thing to find. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we didn't search for this. It came to us. I mean, you can't really recommend it because it's a novelty item that's like at minimum $80 yeah. <laughs> on it's, eBay. It's too expensive. Yeah, but you have totally disposable income. It's like this, I guess this is the one to get. That's about it. Yep.